Hi, this is Fran with Stampendous, and this is week 133. And for November, we will be featuring these fun new stamps. We've got the Kitty Mischief. We've got Field of Flowers, one of my favorites, and Forest Path. And we'll be doing a couple different things in this first week. We'll be doing the Siamese Twins and some of the scenic uh, images here with the sunflowers and some of the uh, forest path here in sepia tone. And this will get us started. So let's start with our little kitty here. And I realize that if I put him crooked on the block, it's trickier to line up like the tabletop here. And I've taken my ruler and pencil and just drawn a little line. So let's stamp him twice here on that line just to get them level with each other. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll stamp our other little sleeping kitty here at the same time. I'm going to use my spritzer to just spray my palette. So for our little Siamese kittens here, I need a light beige brown. And as you can see, my palette for brown is quite dark at the moment. But swirling together the three that I have in this compartment like we do gives me a nice medium brown. And I'm going to get some of this into this compartment just so that when I need a dark brown, I have it. But now I want to add more of the yellow tone and we'll put some of this lighter color into a compartment. Add some water so I can dip into either side there. So we'll do a light wash of this now on the little kitty's faces. And if you study Siamese, they often have darker color on their ears, their paws, and their little snouts. But since we don't see much of their little snouts, <laughs> their little noses here, I'm just going to do this in the light tan color. While that's drying a little bit, I'm going to switch over to painting some of my bright uh, well, let's do our browns on the kitty over here. So for this kitty, I'm going to get all of his furry body uh, damp with my brush. I've got quite a bit of water. And then what I want to do is bring some richer color on my brush and let it just kind of run and mix together within the area that's wet. This should give me an interesting look. And now I'm going to go to a little bit more of a reddish brown. I don't want the color to be too watery. And we'll touch some of that while it's still wet and let that spread here and there. I didn't think so much about drying time here. Um, so it's because I've got the two, I can kind of switch back and forth. Just to show you while I'm at it, this is my area for my black. And I want some that's more on the blue side anyway. So I'm going to darken it by swirling into the marine blue. And then on my brush, I'm going to bring some of this down to this area of the palette. So you can see when we're ready for that. So now with a clean brush, I'll get some of the phthalo blue. And you could do any color here, but I'll just do a little wash of this blue running across. Maybe that's the tablecloth these two are reaching up to. <laughs> Every time I work on my laptop at home with my Wacom tablet and the stylus, 
my kitty has to come and grab the stylus. <laughs> he wants to participate. He's done all sorts of things when I'm working in Photoshop. Okay, and a wet brush will just soften that. And we'll give them these beautiful blue eyes as well. I've never had a Siamese cat, except that I had a neighbor one that would come and visit my cat. And this is when my cat could get in and out the, uh, the little cat door. He could go outside. This was years ago. So this neighbor Siamese cat would come in, and I used to say he was a teenager. He was young, and he had a, a collar with a skull and crossbones on it. And he'd come in and he'd terrorize the place. He'd run around and attack himself in the mirror and hang off the furniture. And about the time my big old cat would go at him, he'd run out, to, <laughs> run out through the garage and out into the, and make his getaway. I really like how the colors are spreading over here while I wasn't even looking at it. That's really fun. And just the water is allowing all those colors to move around. And I wanted to just add a little bit of a black, uh, but I didn't want to do it until I was on the drier side so I could control it a little bit more. And we'll just do some black tips here to the tail and the ears. And maybe we'll do just a little bit over here. Oh, that's very fun. Fun little calico there. Okay, so now um, for the tips of his ears and paws on our little Siamese. The fur is often uh, quite uh, black, but maybe even a blue black. So I've mixed uh, my black with some more of this blue. And let's test it out here. Okay, it's kind of, yeah, it's a nice smoky. You don't want it too blue. It'll look phony. But a little bit of a blue tint to it is kind of fun. I just realized on this one I forgot to paint his eye. He's got one eye open here. We'll give this one more of a blue-green eye. There we go. So on the eyes, after you've painted a light wash, if you let it dry a little bit and then come back in with a deeper shade of blue or green, we can do some shading that really makes the eyes come alive here. So I'm going to darken just to one side here, and that's going to give some dimension to the eyes. Hopefully that's dry enough over there on that side now. On this one, my washes came out quite pale, so adding all the color around the outside was a nice contrast. This one, I'm so much happier with the washes that I got on this fur ball here um, that I don't want to um, add all of those colors after all. So what we're going to do is a little bit different approach here. I think what I'll do is instead just do some olive green washes. And these little kitties, you could paint them to be more indoor or outdoor. We could have a green shade to the carpeting. I'm just going to do a wash here. And we'll leave it to your imagination, whether he's on a green bedspread, he's out in the lawn, <laughs> or on a green carpet. But I am going to add a bit of shading here. We'll take some of my darker blue-black here, add it to my green, 
and do a little bit of a shadow on that side. And on this one, I wanted a little bit more color around his little muzzle here. I'm going to bring in a little bit of rose to warm up the shade of color there that's darker, but not necessarily that much of a warmer color. I'm going to get a little bit more, see if we can give him some little rosy cheeks here. I'm going to set some of the color in and then lighten it with a damp brush here. Okay, that added a little bit of a nice color in there. And who knows, maybe they've been into the raspberry jam. <laughs> Next, we're going to do some sepia tone painting. This is a nice, fun look that really fits here for our forest. And uh, it's very easy to do. So we'll start with this, and then we'll get into some more colorful, scenic things as well. So let's just do some stamping real quick. These panels are about three by four inches. For our little scenery here, I'm going to stamp the houses and then this tree is like the umbrella pines in Italy, which I think are so fascinating. Tall and then they spread out into this beautiful uh, pine up above, way tall above the houses and the fields. In this one, I've created the fields so that it gives you an interesting perspective coming forward. And I did it in several pieces so that you could stamp that center segment. And then you've got this piece that works well at that side. And another little one to this side. And since I had the tree over that way, maybe I'll trim it off. But anyway, we'll go ahead and do our painting from here. Okay, so with each of these, we basically are using one shade of brown and then more or less water. So let's mix a nice brown so that we have a lot of that shade mixed to carry us through each or even both of these little paintings. So by getting your water into this compartment, we've got Scarlet, Gamboge, and Thalo Blue. And you put the three of them together and you get a beautiful shade of brown. Let's get just a little bit more Scarlet and Gamboge. Okay, so let's get this color with some water into this compartment here. Actually, I think I'm going to do a little bit more of the lighter shades here so that I had a deeper brown in there to start with. I'm going to lighten it by doing more of these two colors and less of the blue. Okay, that should give us a nice brown. I'm going to start with quite a bit of water on my brush and dip into this. And with a light wash to start with, I'm going to cover this whole area here. With my lightest wash, I'm going to cover the largest area. And then we'll add more layers. So I'm going to assume that I've got some light coming through from down this pathway and it's going to draw your eye in and then I'll begin to add more layers. So if my light is coming from here, I'll have it coming out this way and I'll have it darker, you know, to either side of the path. So as I begin to do more and more washes of this sepia brown, I start out with large strokes and then come back in with smaller strokes and keep adding deeper colors. So we're going to do some darker colors behind the trees. We're going to shadow 
the trees away from our light source. And when I get up here into the foliage, I do more like little dabs of color to create some foliage appearance here. It's still just really loose. And then I'm also going to darken the tree trunk on the outer sides. So we're covering the right side here, and then over here, the left side, so that we'll kind of exaggerate that lighting coming through. So you can see this is a different shade of brown than my earlier one, it had more of the yellow or the gamboge to it. But either one, as long as you've got that one shade to work with, you'll get a very interesting effect by just building up more and more layers. And some little tiny brush strokes are going to add just an illusion of detail that's quite fun. Okay, so this panel is a little bit shorter. Uh, it was this way on the board, but just bring your brush strokes to an interesting uh, shapes here in the foreground, however uh, tall you want your uh, little painting to be. So very simple, very fun. It's a study in color value, and we haven't done that for a while, but this is a good one to experiment with. Okay, so now we'll do similar with this one. I'm going to get more water on my brush. I want some light color. And up here for the sky, I can go over the trees and everything else. It will give me a softer wash. And I'm going to go ahead and paint a little bit further over here. And Okay, so again, light washes kind of set the the tone here, and then we'll add more layers of color as we go. So between the rows, you can create some darker bands like this. It's going to enhance the look of your fields. My sky wasn't completely dry. Tip of your brush should allow you to get into the detail. Okay, so now with smaller little brush strokes, we'll begin to add some more color and maybe again our light from this side, we can shade all of the left side of these rows. And bringing it a little bit more forward here. have to imagine what's growing in this field. If your windows are dry, I'm going to add just a little bit of a shadow here from the roof line. It's kind of hard to say how these shadows would be, but it just adds a bit of interest here to do a little bit of Color there to the walls. We'll add a little bit of a shadow here to the left for the, the chimney. Okay, a value study in sepia tone. And if you wanted, you might try doing it in a green color like olive and get an interesting, fun look that way. Next, we're going to do a more colorful rendition here of our sunflower fields and beautiful skies. And I wanted to mention that some of this goes back to my inspiration that started at the very beginning. This little watercolor I purchased in Florence, and it was uh, by Sandra Bencita, Bencista, and um, I just loved what she did in the sky area. So we'll do a little bit of that and play around, but now you have the stamps that make it very easy to do a little scene like this, and it could be a lot of different places 
but um, the little house and trees here were done with such a tiny little brush. And so the stamps make it easy for you to just have fun doing the watercolor part of it. So I pulled out each of these because they're each a little bit different. And we'll stamp a couple of them and show you how we painted our sunflower fields. Our Field of Flowers stamp set was designed so that the houses are separate from the fields. And as you can see, it gives us so many more combinations. And the fields in this case will be sunflowers. And in other cases, we'll have lavender fields and poppy fields and uh, all sorts. I'm going to start with my sunflowers and get a nice, bright, clean yellow. But do make sure your brush is clean and you'll get a nice beautiful yellow. So I'm going to do a wash of yellow all the way across my sunflowers. I'm going for the impressionistic Van Gogh approach. Quick and easy and colorful. Van Gogh painted the sunflowers in Arles, which is south of France. And I went through there on the train and did not have a chance to get over to Arles, which was a great disappointment. But I understand none of his paintings really are uh, there at this time. They're in other museums and in other places. But it's certainly an interesting area, and I love to hear about all of the beautiful sunflowers. So here, where you can't travel, you can enjoy imagining all your beautiful flower fields of all the places you'd like to go to see the sunflowers. Now I'm going to add some of the gamboge color here and there in the centers. I could do the centers brown, but on this one I just thought I'd keep the bright yellows. And you'll see I did little brush strokes out to the side, and I'm going to add a little bit more of that with the, the warmer gamboge color, just a little bit. And again, the flowers here are large in the foreground and smaller. And there's also another little stamp that allows you to continue uh, the flowers even further uh, back, which you could do on a longer panel. But we just kept this one simple. So I'm going to go back to this kind of real wet on wet sky technique. We did this very early on. And, and this time I'm going to do it with the thalo blue. And so I'm going to mix a puddle of a very strongly pigmented phthalo blue here. And then I'm going to clean my brush so that I can flood the sky area with just clean water for this particular technique. So I'm going to run my brush, even though you can't see it very well. I'm doing a little vignette area of real wet water where I want my sky above my little house. Then I'm going to dip into this intense phthalo blue, get a bunch of it on my brush, and I'm going to run my brush along that outer edge. We had done this with marine blue, but I have such a bold phthalo blue on my brush that that's really a beautiful deep color of blue. So I mostly applied the paint around the edges and I'm letting the water move it around. I'm simply going to move it and shape it just a little bit. It's moving on its own. I'm going to allow some color to come in through the middle. A little bit more water down there. So this fun technique is what I observed in this little painting and I just thought it was so fun. This was done with a cobalt blue that's such a rich blue, but all those little tiny uh, fuzzy clouds are just so interesting. And each time you do it, the amount of water and the placement of your brush makes it come out a little bit different each time. You can just kind of steer it or shape it just a little bit, but let it dry 
from here and we'll get a very interesting dramatic sky. I'm going to move this over and try to keep it flat there. Okay, and then with this one, I just did a softer blue. So we'll show you both plans and you can try one or both, whichever you prefer. And for this, I'm going to add some more water to my blue puddle here. Okay, so this is a medium blue and it's going to dry a little bit lighter. So in the same way, I'm going to shape an interesting little vignette of blue around my house and trees. You can leave some white if you want. And even though it's just kind of wobbly, it creates an interesting vignette look here. Okay, we're going to let it dry just a little bit and then maybe we'll lift just a little bit for some clouds. Okay, so let's add some quick yellow here to our sunflowers. You don't have to paint each petal one by one, but doing a wash first and then enhancing it will work quite nicely. That sky is just really dramatic, isn't it? So now with a damp brush, let's see if we can lift a little bit more here for some white clouds. Okay, just some little wisps there. On this one, by painting our house and tree on the horizon way down low, we've got lots of room to play with a very dramatic sky. So let's have some fun with this one. And again, I'm going to get a lot of this area wet, just sort of random wet and dry here. But now we'll get some intense blue on my brush and we'll kind of think puffy clouds and kind of move it around and let the water do its thing as well. Little tiny brush strokes in a more dry area will stay. I've got yellow and marine blue for a nice olive color for my trees. Let's do a dry area over here. It's kind of fun just to watch as the uh, paper dries and your sky keeps changing there. If you want, you can do some little brush strokes of green. And I thought on this one I would add some brown, reddish brown to the centers. Each leaf is just a little brush stroke. Now I'm going to do a reddish brown for my tile roof and just that bit more of the reddish brown adds a nice touch of color. I'm going to get a bit of a gray for some shadows and just this little touch of shadowing adds a sophistication to your work. I'm going to lighten that a little bit but I'll just carefully Add some here and then lift some of that away. Just want a little hint of color. I used to think that the whitewashed buildings were just kind of boring, but I realized sometimes in a landscape that white just really pops and it's quite picturesque. This one will do kind of a old stone color here with our bit of beige that we've mixed. Yeah, each sky is different but very fun, isn't it? I'm going to do a reddish brown on the sunflower centers here. I'm just going to lift a little bit of color on the left. I mean, I'm lifting color on the right and I'm darkening on the left here just to create a little bit of shadowing. It's kind of nice touch to do a little scarlet door here. Maybe you've been sitting there watching to see if I would realize I didn't have any land at all over here. We'll add just a little stripe of color here. Some green, Maybe brown. My doorway wasn't completely dry. Lots of 
lots of variations. So take a look at our gallery and have some fun with your scenic painting this week. Mm -hmm.